Hi, I'm Sabrina Saunders Mosby, President and CEO of Vibrant Pittsburgh. And I'm elated to welcome you to this virtual presentation of the 2020 Vibrant Index Report to the Region. For the past decade, Vibrant Pittsburgh has served as the region's central resource, spokesperson, and convener on workforce diversity and inclusion issues. Our mission is to build a thriving and inclusive Pittsburgh region by attracting, retaining, and elevating a diversity of talent. The Vibrant Index Initiative is a collaboration between Vibrant Pittsburgh and the Allegheny Conference on Community Development. In its second year, the index was created to diagnose and drive diversity, equity, and inclusion changes across industry and sector for our region's participating organizations. Before we get started, it cannot be overstated that this year was quite unique. The COVID-19 pandemic had an impact on respondents' answers in several sections. Thus, the data that will be presented here is not necessarily representative of all organizations in the Pittsburgh region and has been collected to provide a snapshot of DEI practices taking place in the Pittsburgh region. The index identifies areas of success as well as the critical actions that are needed to improve the practices, policies, and cultures of organizations in our region. It continues to encourage participating companies to reflect on best practices while investigating opportunities to increase the impact of their DEI efforts. Each of the best practices included in the diagnostic tool was chosen based on sound research and the list was vetted by scholars in the field. During our first year, we measured how 50 of the region's organizations were addressing DEI through their policies and workplace practices. And we evaluated companies in nine impact areas, identifying areas of responsibility, diversity and inclusion, strengths, and opportunities to change within the organization. As a region, we must ensure that this diversity is better measured and encouraged. To that end, this year's Vibrant Index was revised and refined, and ultimately, we improved the beta instrument used in year one vastly. We offered the confidential tool for free once again, but also open the process to participation from any organization in the region, and the number of organizational participants increased by 56%. And we grew the diagnostic tool from 42 questions to 83 questions and added a critical area focused on the response to the pandemic and social unrest to dive even deeper. At Vibrant Pittsburgh, we are committed to providing the best snapshot of regional organizations that participate in the region, the region's Vibrant Index, and utilizing its promising practices. And we simply cannot do this work without the partnership of Stephanie Pashman, her team, and members of the Allegheny Conference. Welcome, Stephanie, and thank you so much for continuing this great work with us. Thank you, Sabrina. And I want to start off by congratulating you on your leadership and on the successful um, completion of the second year of this incredibly important index. It is really our pleasure to partner. And more importantly, it's an obligation for all of us to be part of this work, to bring the change that we all want to see in our communities. And we know, as Sabrina said, it has never been more critical to do the work to improve the state of equity in our region. And this vibrant index is the toolbox we need, all of us, to be able to tell the story about what is happening on the ground, in our organizations, in our companies, so we can become more inclusive and more welcoming. I like to say our job at the conference is to lead us in developing a next generation economy for all, that is truly for all. And the way we do that is by rolling up our sleeves and doing this hard work. And we know it is not easy. Coming off this pandemic, we know the disparities proliferate across all of our systems, whether it's judiciary or healthcare or employment opportunities or any or housing, we know that we have disparities that must be addressed and we cannot ignore them any further. 
What is unique, though, about Pittsburgh is that we roll up our sleeves and we have a can-do attitude of collaborative spirit like you see here today to try and understand the challenges and get them done. And we do it in a way where we dig deep on the problems to know what's real, to know the data, to understand the facts so we can address the true challenges we face. That vibrant index that we're talking about today, that is the tool that is going to move us in the direction of a future-oriented economy. One of our biggest challenges in this region is making sure we have viable talent pipelines so we can have a thriving economy. We unfortunately are not growing as fast as we'd like to as a region. We have not grown our population like other competitive regions had. And when we try and bring businesses and grow businesses here, they want to see those talent pools and they want to see them vibrant and diverse. And so we need to continue to do this work to make that change happen, to build our communities, to solve the cultural challenges in our organization and to know how we are interacting with one another. What is actually quite encouraging is the change we saw and how much we saw our employers and our businesses and organizations get in the game over the last year and to step up. We saw billion dollar investments just from people picking up the phone to say we have a problem, we have to improve the state of racial equity in our region. We know, and as Sabrina said, we have more folks getting into this being part of the index but I would say it's not enough. We have 30,000 companies and in our region and all of us need to be part of this important work. We, I encourage all of you to continue to join us as we address this, understand it and work together to do better. None of us have all the answers, but together we have many, many more answers. So let's work together in, in, internally, externally, so we can actually continue to support the work of Vibrant, the Vibrant Index, and the work of racial equity and inclusion in our region. And so this is why the Allegheny Conference continues to partner with Vibrant Pittsburgh to encourage our members to be part of this. I'd like to just end by congratulating our Vibrant Champions, who I know will be acknowledged soon. You are modeling the way, your leadership is what we need so we can all learn from your examples. And I wanna thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for your interest and your engagement. And again, Sabrina, thank you for all you're doing to make this happen. Thank you, Stephanie, for your partnership. And I look forward to continuing this work with you. Okay. Now I believe it's time for us to dive into the data. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce Laura McKnight. Laura serves as Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Programs and Services at Vibrant Pittsburgh. She also serves as the lead on the Vibrant Index Initiative. And Laura is going to walk us through the 2020 Vibrant Index Summary Report. Before I turn things over to Laura, if you have any questions, you see the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, please use it to submit them and we will answer them live at the end of today's program. All right, Laura, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Sabrina. And I am incredibly excited to tell you all more about the 2020 Vibrant Index Summary Report. And as Sabrina said, if you have any questions, again, use the Q&A and we will address those questions at the end of our session today. So what is the Vibrant Index? From January through March of this year, 2021, organizations participated in the second year of the Vibrant Index, which is a process that assists organizations in identifying their strengths, as well as areas for continual improvement in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion. In May of this year, participating organizations received confidential feedback reports that reflected their DEI practices in 2020 showing their scores compared to our sample averages, our organizational size averages, and high scores in each category. These reports also included tips for adopting better practices in the future. Questions were scored using a proprietary process that adjusted an organization's scores based on the size of the organization as well as other factors. The summary report that we are going to review today, however, uses unadjusted scores to look at all organizations as a group. The information presented in the Vibrant Index Summary Report is drawn from a voluntary diagnostic that's made available to organizations in the greater Pittsburgh region. Organizations self-selected participation and all questions that were answered were voluntary, 
So as a result, the findings are not necessarily representative of the greater Pittsburgh region, but they do provide a great snapshot of the best practices that are being utilized by employers in our region. In its second year, as Sabrina said, we had 78 organizations complete the diagnostic, which is a 56% increase from our first year, which collected 2019 data. Participating organizations represented a variety of industries and sizes, although nonprofits were overrepresented in this year's participant group and nonprofits comprised about 54% of organizational participation. Just for comparison, if you look at the state of Pennsylvania, approximately 15% of workers are employed by nonprofits. Participating organizations answered questions in 10 categories, but were only scored for nine categories. The last category, category 10, which is called organizational response to the pandemic protests and socio-political unrest was not scored. The data that we gathered in this category is being used to identify promising practices that organizations put into place in 2020 to address both the pandemic and the spotlight that was on systemic inequities in the United States. So diving into our categories, our first category, written commitment and transparency, ask questions about an organization's public commitment to DEI, such as the signing of a diversity pledge or the public dissemination and publication of a non-discrimination policy. A written public commitment shows customers, clients, potential and current employees and the public that DEI are organizational values. Transparent DEI commitments set the tone for an organization's culture and climate. In our 2020 sample, we had 35% of organizations with leaders who had signed a public pledge to support DEI. 73 of the 78 organizations had a written non-discrimination policy. And of those 73, 68 explicitly stated that they do not discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation. 59 of those state that they do not discriminate on the basis of gender identity. And we had 40 organizations that placed their non-discrimination policies on their websites. In the benefits and policies section, the report looks at key benefits that have large impacts on underrepresented and marginalized populations. It is not intended to be a comprehensive evaluation of all benefits and policies, but this section instead is indicative of the care that organizations take to make work life easier or even possible for all employees. The table here on the slide addresses a selection of benefits that have been shown to have an impact on the ability of people with children to thrive in the workplace. For example, the only family-friendly benefit that was out of reach for most participants in our sample and for all small organizations was on-site childcare or childcare reimbursement. One organization in 2020 covered emergency childcare and another provided discounts for childcare. Nearly all organizations provided work from home options or flex flexible work arrangements during the COVID-19 pandemic. The concept of gender and how it is expressed has changed throughout history. And today more transgender and non-binary people are open about how they identify themselves. This table shows the ways in which organizations in our sample provided opportunities for employees to make their pronouns known, with corporate email signatures being the most common avenue for pronoun expression. The employee networks category examines how organizations provide underrepresented employees with networks and resources critical to engagement, advancement, and retention in the workplace. In turn, these networks, often called employee resource groups or business resource groups, can provide organizations with critical insights into communities and cultures and create a more inclusive work environment. EBRGs are not appropriate for every organization, and the success of an EBRG is dependent upon a variety of factors, such as climate, size, and the EBRG structure. 
An area of opportunity for participant organizations with EBRGs is in performance management. As you can see here, that performance management, which is uh, the farthest to the right, uh, is an area where organizations could improve. And we recommend that EBRG leadership be factored into employee evaluation. Diversity, equity, and inclusion work requires the support of an organization's leadership, and the leadership category is a snapshot of organization's executive participation and investment. 36 of our participants' boards had a committee that was dedicated to the organization's DEI strategy. 45 of the participants' boards are tracking data regarding board members' demographics as they relate to underrepresented groups. And while chief diversity officers and dedicated diversity specialists may only be possible for larger organizations, 65 of the 78 participants in our sample had dedicated employees that are working on diversity issues. The Vibrant Index Diagnostic also asked participants about leaders' DEI priorities. 94% of participants reported that a top priority for their organization was the creation of an inclusive culture. Other top goals commonly held by respondents included retention and development of talent, developing a talent pipeline, and leveraging DEI to advance organizational objectives. The training and education category dives into the ways in which DEI topics are incorporated into an organization's professional development and training programs. Most participating organizations had diversity, equity, and inclusion related training within the last year. For some, that training was a one-time offering during the onboarding process. Organizations offered a vast number of topics for training and the most frequent training topics included issues of race and ethnicity, unconscious or implicit bias, disability issues, and cultural competence. Webinars were the most popular way of delivering DEI-related training in 2020, and this is likely due to the constraints of the COVID-19 pandemic. Virtual learning opportunities are convenient and can allow for greater participation, even as employees return to the office. The accountability metrics category investigates how organizations assess if DEI efforts are yielding fruit. When we take care to analyze our systems, we can make sure that they do not disenfranchise people from underrepresented groups. Most respondent organizations gathered data about the race and or ethnicity and gender of their employees, as well as role and level within their organization. About half of participants looked at demographic data and compensation, as well as demographic information as it relates to promotions and advancement. And this is a clear area of opportunity for our region's organizations. Employers that are not yet ready to develop formal DEI goals or to make attraction, retention, and elevation data public can begin to track data to identify areas where inequity may be occurring. Talent engagement and recruitment are the first steps in having a diverse workforce but efforts must go beyond getting top underrepresented talent in the door. The engagement and recruitment category looks at the intentional and strategic actions taking place within an organization to ensure that hiring processes are fair, biases are mitigated, and that all employees receive cultivation toward success. As you can see in the application practices graph here, there are many techniques for reducing bias in the hiring process. Standardizing interview questions and utilizing hiring panels are two common practices that the majority of our participants utilized to check their bias in their recruiting efforts. The supplier diversity category assesses how organizations are utilizing supplier spend to disrupt bias, equalize the playing field, and build wealth networks in marginalized communities. By collecting data on the diversity of suppliers, an organization can gain awareness of spending patterns and redirect resources accordingly. Of the 78 organizations that participated in the diagnostic, 
37 organizations are collecting and analyzing diversity of suppliers, 29 have an official supplier diversity plan, and 30 organizations track spending in terms of supplier diversity. Organizations interested in moving the supplier diversity needle can begin by tracking information about their suppliers and consultants to gather data on the spending and how it is going toward women-owned and minority-owned businesses. Women-owned and minority-owned businesses should be tracked separately to ensure data accuracy. The community engagement category assesses organizational participation in community initiatives to create a regional culture that celebrates a diversity of experiences. Organizations in the 2020 diagnostic were involved in a variety of diverse community projects, organizations, and initiatives in Pittsburgh as well as other locations. Because many events were canceled due to the global pandemic, some organizations did have difficulty participating in or sponsoring public events. And as described earlier, the final category of the diagnostic was not scored, but was used to gather information about how organizations rose to the challenges specific to the global COVID-19 pandemic and systemic inequities in the nation. Participating organizations offered a wide range of services in response to the tumultuous year that was 2020. These included a focus on employee wellness and psychological well-being, reminders of organizational commitments to fight racism, as well as surveys, discussions, town halls, and meetings to discuss current events. On this slide, you can see the variety of opportunities that organizations provided to their employees to express personal challenges related to current events in 2020. Organizations often provided team meetings and one-on-one -on -one meetings to connect, reflect, and provide resources. I know that is a lot of information to digest, so I encourage you to dive into the full summary report, which is available on our website. To wrap up the data here, let's talk about some of the key findings to highlight that we did find in our report. So 94% of respondents reported that developing an inclusive culture was a top priority for their DEI initiatives. We know building an inclusive culture in the workplace is an excellent goal that will help with retention as well as diverse talent attraction. The Pittsburgh region's ability to develop an inclusive regional culture will move the needle in terms of attracting workers to address the coming worker shortfall. 85% of respondents offered employee assistance programs. An employee assistance program or EAP is a work-based intervention program designed to assist employees in resolving personal problems that may adversely affect the employee's performance. EAPs are an important support structure for employees, especially during challenging times. Investing in employees' overall well-being and the well-being of their families is a vital component when building an equitable and inclusive workforce. 78% of respondents stated explicitly that they do not discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation. A firm and explicit commitment against discrimination based on sexual orientation will help LGBTQIA employees, customers, and clients to feel more welcome. 76% of respondents have an internal advising body dedicated to diversity and inclusion. While all employees are responsible for creating inclusive work cultures and all can be involved in workplace DEI initiatives, an internal DEI advisory body with experience and expertise will drive this work forward for an organization. Assigning specific responsibility for advancing organizational DEI objectives is an important visible commitment. And last, only 31% of respondents' senior executives have a specific DEI component as part of their individual performance evaluations. While organizations are clearly making strides in creating internal DEI initiatives, leadership accountability is key to seeing these DEI efforts come to fruition. This is an area of opportunity for our region's businesses. 
So again, if you have any questions, please enter those into the Q&A and we will address those at the end of our session. And now I will turn things back over to Sabrina. Thank you, Laura. A special thank you also to the Diversity Assessment Committee for their investments as well. Remember, as Laura mentioned, please submit any questions that you have via the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we will try and address them live at the end of today's program. We are very proud of this work and commend all organizations who participated this year. Companies that scored at or above the 95th percentile on the Vibrant Index Diagnostic are considered Vibrant Champions. Use of the Vibrant Champions name is an exclusive benefit for the companies that scored at or above 95th. An organizational designation of Vibrant Champion does not mean to convey perfection. Vibrant Pittsburgh and the Allegheny Conference on Community Development recognize that there is really no one right way to practice inclusion, and that some of the practices may be more feasible for some companies or industries than others. But a score at or above the 95th percentile on the Vibrant Index Diagnostic means that a company adheres to many of the numerous diversity and inclusion practices featured in the diagnostic. In its inaugural year, we named three Vibrant Champions. And this year, I'm proud to announce four. As I ask our champions to join us on video and prepare to unmute, I am very excited to announce this year's Vibrant Champions, the Community College of Allegheny County, the Pittsburgh Promise, PNC Bank, and UPMC. First, please welcome Kimberly Manigault, Vice President of Human Resources at CCAC. Thanks for joining us this morning, Kimberly. Good morning, glad to be here. On behalf of Dr. Quentin Bullock, the CCAC Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and administrators, we're honored to accept the distinction of being a 2021 Vibrant Champion. Recognition as a vibrant champion is significant and meaningful for CCAC. This distinction reflects the story we tell through our mission to provide access to high quality education in a diverse, caring, and innovative learning environment, upholding our core values of diversity, community, integrity, and learning. CCAC is on a journey to cultural competence. It's important for CCAC to build a culture of diversity, equity, and inclusion by taking strategic action. For instance, diversity standards are integrated into our recruitment process, and diversity is a designated competency on our performance appraisal. The Vibrant Champion Distinction affirms these actions. CCAC's employees are key to our commitment to advancing diversity. During this pandemic year, in the wake of social injustice and unrest, the college launched a diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate program for employees. We were delighted that our employees embraced the program with no visible resistance. This vibrant champion distinction will encourage, motivate, and inspire our employees to continue the journey. CCAC is also recognized as a most promising place to work in community colleges, as named by NYSOD and Diverse Issues News Magazine. These distinctions affirm that CCAC is moving in the right direction, yet we're not done. We recognize that we have more work to do and we're committed to working collaboratively within the community to attract, retain, and develop diverse talent. A vital way CCAC continues our journey is through adoption of the five commitments. The five commitments include, one, a commitment to care, two, a commitment to serve the whole community with a focus on social justice, three, a commitment to build a culture of equity on campus, four, a commitment to identify and dismantle campus structures that breed disparities and then redesign the College for Equity. And five, 
a commitment to fund what matters most. It's an exciting time to be at CCAC and advancing diversity. Thank you for this wonderful, vibrant champion distinction. Thank you, Kimberly. And again, congratulations. Next, I would like to welcome Salim Gabril, Executive Director of the Pittsburgh Promise. Salim, congratulations on this designation. Thank you, Sabrina. We are humbled and we are um, honored and grateful that um, you have selected us for this, for this recognition. However, having said that, we are looking forward to the day when being a vibrant champion is as standard equipment is as four tires are to a, to a car. Uh, none of us celebrate getting four tires with our car and we ought to get to the day when meeting the, um, the, the, the hopeful outcomes for inclusion in all of our organizations is standard equipment. And therefore everybody becomes a vibrant champion. Uh, you know, for me, developing an inclusive community is, is personal, is also important professionally and is uh, central to the mission. So personal, I am an immigrant. I showed up in this country when I was a 16 year old Lebanese boy speaking Arabic and living in Iowa. Uh, we came to Pittsburgh eight years later when I was a 24 year old newlywed with a baby. And Pittsburgh opened its doors for me. And though I made countless and continue to make countless mistakes, I was given lots and lots of opportunities and lots and lots of chances. And it obviously, it ought to be, it ought to be the value of everyone who has had the door open for them to both go through it and experience opportunity and prosperity, but also hold the door open for those who have not yet had access. So it's, it's a priority for me personally, it's a priority for me professionally because at the Pittsburgh Promise, our board and our staff who represent uh, the diversity of this great community um, have made it their priority to elevate, elevate the young people who are um, residents of our urban core and attend our urban public schools and create opportunities for them to pursue higher education so that they can uh, walk through the doors of opportunity presented by the great companies on this screen and in this, in this town. And so far, I'm grateful to say that more than 10,000 kids have been served through the Pittsburgh Promise, and more than half of them are students of color, and all of them together have received more than $150 million provided by the private sector in Pittsburgh to open doors of educational opportunity for them. And I am thrilled to tell you that uh, PNC, CCAC, and UPMC have all made it a priority to educate, but also employ I know this for a fact that UPMC has hired more than 1,100 of the Pittsburgh Promise scholars so far. And knowing their growth trajectory, they'll probably hire all 10,000 at some point. Isn't that right, James? Uh, and then finally, uh, I want to say that creating a culture of inclusion in our workplaces doesn't happen by accident and requires intentionality. Uh, and the kind of intentionality that it requires moved the Pittsburgh Promise from being uh, from scoring poorly in the first year of the vibrant index to scoring substantially better in the second year. And what that required is just kind of paying attention to small things, because just like a, a building is comprised of a whole bunch of bricks, similarly, our cultures of inclusion require adding one brick at a time and layering on those priorities that make our doors open and our cultures welcoming to all who wish to enter. Thank you, Salim. Our region is certainly much richer because of your leadership and congratulations. Thank you, Sabrina. Aaron Baker serves as Senior Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion at PNC Bank. Aaron, congratulations on maintaining this vibrant champion designation at PNC. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much to Vibrant Pittsburgh for offering the Vibrant Index, for mobilizing all of us towards best practices and for all that you do for the region. PNC is thrilled to be a vibrant champion for the second time. We really connect with the mission of the index itself, which is to inspire organizations in the Pittsburgh region to utilize DEI best practices. We learn a lot from this process. It both validates our journey in many ways, but most importantly, it offers those best practices where we can continue to accelerate and improve. 
Since our participation this year, uh, we were inspired to make strides in the use of pronouns within the organization, increase DNI accountability for all of our employees, and additional commitments that we've made to our marketplace. We are inspired and seeing the collective work in this region keeps us inspired. If we can be a part of inspiring others to do more, that is incredibly meaningful for us. And to the organizations and companies on the line who've not yet participated in this index, please join us. PNC has been on an intentional DNI journey for almost 15 years. The events of the past year have only accelerated our efforts and we are better positioned than ever of both a pursuit of fully inclusive corporate culture, as well as our ability to make a greater impact within our communities. Over the past year or so, we've been extremely proud to announce significant investments and commitments to support diverse and low to moderate income communities, to advance economic empowerment and address systemic racism. It is so rewarding to see our internal and external commitments come together to fully support our employees, our customers, and our communities. For us, these collective efforts allow us to truly live our values, as well as our brand promise, which is to help move all forward financially. Next year, we hope to share what we are doing to further integrate DNI into everything we do, our language, our processes, our products, our services, and our client experiences. So congratulations to the other champions and to all the companies and organizations in Pittsburgh who are doing their part to make the region a more diverse and inclusive place to live. We are so excited to be on this journey with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Erin, and congratulations again. Dr. James Taylor is both Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer and Chief Talent Management Officer at UPMC. James, UPMC has also maintained its vibrant champion designation this year. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Sabrina. And on behalf of the 92,000 employees that make up UPMC, uh, it's truly a delight and an honor to be recognized uh, with this distinction by Vibrant Pittsburgh uh, and to be included in a class of vibrant champions alongside CCAC, uh, PNC, and the Pittsburgh Promise. Again, it's truly a privilege uh, on behalf of the organization. Uh, Sabrina, what you and your team at Vibrant Pittsburgh have done uh, uh, is absolutely remarkable, and we thank you for your leadership within our region uh, and also for holding us accountable, uh, accountable with not just what we say, but accountable with what we do. Uh, to embed diversity, equity, and inclusion more deeply within the fabric of our neighborhoods uh, and our organizations. Uh, just as Pittsburgh is synonymous with sports and steel uh, and with bridges and pierogies, uh, I too believe that, that, that we can be known uh, to be a city that leverages diversity uh, and all of its tenants uh, to achieve the vision for the future and to grow uh, our local businesses. Uh, a platform like that, which we have today, allows us to ask, uh, what does an inclusive Pittsburgh for all look like? And perhaps more importantly, what's the role of all of us uh, in this virtual room in ensuring that the access and uh, equity and the elimination of, not reduction, but elimination of all disparities throughout our love, our beloved community, what does that look like? Uh, because we all here today know that we don't just want diversity for the sake of being diverse. Uh, but we realize that a diverse Pittsburgh will ensure that we have the knowledge and the critical thinking and the innovation required of a leading and a forward thinking economy uh, with a second to none reputation and a competitive identity. And so to that end, in some industries, there's only a vague connection between the work of diversity and the core work of the organization. Uh, that's not so with us at UPMC. Uh, we know and we recognize that transformation is an urgent industry requirement for us within healthcare and cultural competence is, is fundamental to our transformation. Uh, our employees throughout UPMC, they're constantly assessing the direct link between culture and workplace productivity and community engagement and healthcare outcomes uh, to inform the progression of our diversity and inclusion agenda. Uh, be it our ability of increasing representation of people of color and our executive workforce by 88% over the last five years, uh, or our delivery of two separate 
uh, annual mandatory diversity learnings required of every single employee, regardless of role uh, within the organization, uh, or our laser focus on health disparities to improve outcomes uh, specific to primary care or cardiovascular care uh, and maternal and child health, uh, or our $1.7 billion community investment in 2020 uh, in contributions focused on medical research and education, uh, charity care and health and wellness programs. Uh, we simply want to ensure that we're doing our part uh, and that we're leading the way at UPMC to create a region in which everyone here can live and can thrive. And so Vibrant Pittsburgh, again, we thank you for this incredible honor uh, and affording us this great privilege. Thank you. Thank you so much, James, and congratulations to UPMC. Thank you for the long haul investment in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Once again, congratulations to all four of our vibrant champions, the Community College of Allegheny County, the Pittsburgh Promise, PNC Bank, and UPMC. We invite all organizations to participate in the Vibrant Index Diagnostic in the coming year, and we look forward to engaging with our champions throughout the remainder of this year as we dive deeper into this work. Thank you so much. While reviewing the data examined by the diagnostic process, the areas of growth and success, as well as opportunities for continued change, it's impossible for us not to reflect on the overarching challenges of 2020. 2020 was an extraordinary year by all accounts. So much so that we are still navigating the impact and various areas of uncertainty. It was a year of a global pandemic, recession, unprecedented government actions, and deeply felt social and racial injustice. And it was a time when employees, business stakeholders, and communities discovered who our region's companies were and what their leadership stood for when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Historically, crises like economic recessions and pandemics expose what is already broken or in the process of breaking in our society. As we reflect on the past 18 months, we must acknowledge a universal unmasking of sorts of disparities and inequities that have been preventing all of our region's residents from reaching their fullest potential. A lack of workplace equity, with subsequently insufficient retention, elevation, and attraction of diverse talent due to historical and systemic disparities. Let me be clear, many of our region's businesses spoke up and continue to step up. Soon, the region will have returned to a semblance of normal. This is not the time to take our foot off the gas in our DEI investments. The realities of the pandemic are already giving way to broader considerations for how, where, and when we all work together. We can and must look back and investigate what was learned. We learned firsthand the richness of diversity layered into our most valuable resource, our people. As Laura shared when Showcasing the data, many companies began the process of unlocking the power that diversity makes our people engaged and more productive. As data is gathered every year with the newly refined diagnostic instrument, and as the sample sizes increase, the challenges in showing year over year data will decrease. But for the Vibrant Index, to truly show the strides being made in our region. All dedicated organizations must participate fully in the Vibrant Index Initiative, utilizing the diagnostic annually and committing to tackle this work to improve our region together. To that end, I'd like to issue my 2021 call to action for the region. Many organizations issued public pledges to support DEI, but more organizations should share the action steps, the 
the plans and measures put in place to uphold their public statements and therefore holding themselves accountable. Non-discrimination policies should be intentional and should be expanded to mention all marginalized or historically underrepresented groups. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are about more than just hiring to elevate differences throughout the workforce. Organizations need non-discrimination policies in their workplaces that reflect organizational commitments to treating everyone equally. The business community should quickly provide more formal opportunities to express pronouns. As more companies invest in LGBTQ inclusion and gender inclusive workplaces, pronouns have become a significant focal point. From pronouns listed on email signatures and business cards to pronoun buttons worn by retail employees, offering opportunities to express pronouns let employees know that they are welcome and bring their whole self to work. Organizations interested in improving morale, retention, cultures of belonging, and attracting a diversity of talent should provide more employee networks. Employee and business resource groups have historically been organized around a shared identity or affinity such as race, gender, age, or mental health. And they serve as a haven, a haven of belonging. Offering a space of underrepresented employees to find one another, to stave off senses of isolation, and experience a reprieve from the daily aggressions they have endured many times at work. EBRGs bring many benefits to organizations, and this past year has elevated the need for and the importance of such networks. We continue to advocate for them at Vibrant Pittsburgh. Organizations committed to building cultures of inclusion should implement a leadership body focused on DEI, plain and simple, led by top organizational leadership, and it should represent a diverse perspective. That is the only way we empower and institute organization-wide change. Track career pro pro progression of underrepresented employees as a part of your retention strategy. Employees feel more engaged when they believe that their employer is concerned about their growth and provides avenues to reach individual career goals. The ways in which organizations handle the employee experience during the turmoil of 2020 provide a window into organizational values. The additional category that was added to the 2020 diagnostic, the organizational response to the pandemic, protests, and social political unrest was not scored, but it provided an opportunity to gather data about the ways in which organizations address the crises that occurred this past year. If DEI, respect and belonging are core values of an organization, you must examine whether the decisions made during the pandemic show a clear commitment to those values. When our country faces acts of injustice, organizations should provide a clear support and showing to their employees and evaluate their DEI policies. Employees, customers, and business partners are already paying attention to how companies responded to the pandemic. And they will certainly remember how organizationals, the organizational's response aligning to the organization's stated values. This past year has brought to the forefront that a focus on diversity or increasing representation of people from various backgrounds, perspectives, and experiences is only part of the equation. Inclusion, making space and amplifying the voices of everyone in the workplace is equally as important. Today's workforce is one of the most diverse in our nation's history. In the workplace, the definition of diversity is both expanding upon quantifiable demographic traits like race, ethnicity, and gender, and recognizing the importance of the intersection of identities on the employee experience is vitally important. For our region to contend in the competitive race for diverse talent, we must shift our approach. 
A focus on equity in the workplace must be magnified and our region's businesses must operate with a deeper level of transparency, leadership that represents a variety of experiences, advancement that leaves no one behind, and other equality centering practices that change cultures for the better. I look forward to continuing to work alongside our region's businesses as an inclusion partner and a catalyst for equitable change. And I thank you for participating today. I hope today's presentation was insightful and evokes something actionable that helps each of us advance diversity, equity, and inclusion in our region. Also, thank you for submitting your questions. I'd like to invite Laura McKnight back so that we can get started on our Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. And we have a few questions that I'm just going to get out of the way right now about our process for participating in the Vibrant Index. So a couple questions about how organizations were chosen uh, for the index. Any organization within the region can participate in the Vibrant Index. We opened our sample to all organizations in our region uh, this year. Our first year, we, we had it as a, a smaller group to beta test the process, uh, but we are continuing on to offer this at no cost to participant organizations to participate. So if you have an organization in mind that you would like to have participate uh, when we reopen our diagnostic process in January, please do let me know. Uh, I will drop my uh, email address in the chat and you can reach out to me directly about that. And we also had a question about how Pittsburgh's performance compares to similar metrics for similar size cities. That is a great question. And as far as we are aware, we do not know of any other region that is looking at best practices and the adoption of best practices around DEI within organizations in the way that we are looking at this. So uh, that region may be out there as far as we can tell though, this is a unique project that is happening within our region. Uh, the Greater Cleveland Partnership is uh, a group that does similar work, but they are gathering demographic data and, and other data. So if you have any questions about uh, that process or how we can look at our region compared to others, again, let me know. I will drop my email in the chat. I would, however, like to begin with a conversation and open this up to, to anyone on our panel today. We had a question about how to continue to create opportunities for open discussions, town halls, or courageous conversations. This individual referenced that uh, they had an open discussion um, about the George Floyd murder case and that it was really valued by employees. And they're curious if we have any thoughts about how to keep those conversations moving and keep those conversations going around uh, topics of this nature. I can um, talk a little bit about what PNC is doing in that regard. Um, there's sort of a, an accountability component and then there's sort of like a, a how and what resources are offered. So we actually, in our leadership standards for leaders at PNC, um, at the end of the year, our employees will um, get to give anonymous feedback that will go kind of a step above their direct manager and indicate whether their manager has held ongoing inclusive conversations. So we feel so strongly about inclusive conversations and our leaders' um, capability in that arena. We've done a lot of preparation, so that's a part of it too. You can't just have an ask of your leaders without preparing them but we've prepared our leaders and now there's an accountability component that their employees can weigh in on. That's a part of their performance review. And then as far as our RD and I team, we provide ongoing uh, frameworks and opportunities for inclusive conversations. And we'll tie them to our programs, for example. So our history and heritage month programs, their enterprise wide events, and then we'll uh, create inclusive conversation guides that accompany those. Um, so I think it's a multi-pronged approach. It's preparing leaders and getting them comfortable and capable. It's actually holding them accountable for doing so. And then it's the DNI group providing opportunities that make it really easy for managers to have those conversations. I love what Aaron said. The, the uh, only addition that I would add from this perspective 
uh, again, finding so much value in the conversation, right? With individuals being able to express uh, their perspective and their walk and their lens around how they see and view the world, uh, which can be different from employee to employee or leader to leader. Uh, I, for us, uh, there's been power in really embedding uh, segments of conversation around diversity, equity, and inclusion in town hall events, uh, for example, uh, in which the topic is not necessarily diversity and inclusion, but the magic or the power is how do we embed and weave this conversation and do everything that we do within the organization so that it's not a, a diversity conversation, but it's embedded in the fabric of conversation that simply takes place throughout the organization. Uh, lastly, I'll note that the conversation again is really important, uh, uh, but I'm also interested in what's the action that results from the conversation uh, and how does that shift or impact strategy and policy and, and uh, guidelines that are existent throughout the organization? And I do have something to add. Um, I, I agree with what was said. Something else that we also did at CCAC is with our leadership um, to have a discussion. We had a diversity a book discussion and we met um, and we each presented on uh, a chapter so that we could have discussion, so that we could challenge ourselves, so that we could um, give our opinions and have that thought. And just going through that exercise uh, at that level for the, for the leadership also uh, positions us to be able to do the same for uh, different uh, departments across the college. And we're planning to do the same thing this year. So each, we're making that commitment uh, as a leadership team to educate ourselves and to keep the diversity issue in front of ourselves, which uh, enables us to pass it along throughout the organization. If, and if I may add a few more seconds to this question, um, what my friends have said, uh, I'm in full agreement with and uh, what is, I think, central to everything that has been said is just kind of having that become a part of the ongoing conversation as opposed to this is an event that happens periodically, a topic that we bring up on, you know, in certain months and certain occasions, but it just kind of becomes part of the air that we breathe within an organization, the water that we uh, drink in common. Um, and then when, when you create that kind of space, then uh, little by little, defensiveness walls, defensive walls kind of shrink and drop and, and kind of come to a more manageable size as people are free to say what they what they feel and to use Sabrina's language to bring their whole selves into the workplace. And I, I will share a personal example. Um, we have our conversations on a very regular basis, sometimes on a weekly basis in de departmental or staff meetings, always in the context of full staff meetings. And at the, our June staff meeting, uh, the morning of the meeting, one of my colleagues sent me an email um, and just simply to say, so she, she's an African-American woman and, uh, and a straight African-American woman. She sent me an email that said, Salim, you did a great job celebrating Black History Month for our organization, but here we are in June and you've said nothing to our sisters and brothers on staff who come from the LGBTQ community and you've not affirmed Pride Month. Uh, and it was very gentle, but it was an important prod. And I saw so at staff meeting that afternoon, I began with asking for forgiveness and just kind of admitting that I dropped the ball, that, um, you know, I, um, uh, so, so creating an atmosphere, a culture where those kinds of conversations can happen without defensiveness and without fear of uh, retaliation is of critical importance. Thank you, everyone. And Sabrina, I think we are at time. I know, I can't believe it. It always goes so, so quickly. Uh, if you have additional questions, I know that our champions are always available to continue the conversation. We will capture the questions that are left in Q&A and make sure that we get back to you with those responses. Thank you so much again for your participation in this virtual presentation of the 2020 Vibrant Index Report to the Region. Thank you to our partner, the Allegheny Conference on Community Development, and congratulations to our four vibrant champions, the Community College of Allegheny County, Pittsburgh Promise, PNC Bank, and UPMC. 
If you haven't already, we hope that you will connect with Vibrant Pittsburgh via our various social networks to learn about our upcoming events, activities, and resources, including the, vir the virtual Regional Economic Inclusion Summit on October 13th. Don't forget that you'll be able to access the full summary report on our website at vibrantpittsburgh.org. Thank you and have a wonderful afternoon.